When a cop dies in the line of duty, giving his last full measure of devotion, most of the time we set that aside and say, listen, this black person killed this white cop and there's something really, really wrong because that's so wildly out of proportion. Despite all the fairy tales you hear that somehow cops are going around picking on black people, shooting black people all, you know, all the time for no reason whatsoever, when we know the opposite is true. But this time we're going to we're, we're going to we're going to do a video, show a video of this cop, this dead cop. We're going to remind people what a hero he was. Then why don't we show another? Then why don't we show another video or two that really sets this in a larger context about black on white hostility? I mean, the, these videos are good, but these videos are on one end of the spectrum of black on white hostility and violence on the other end of the spectrum are is just plain old it starts off with dislike suspicion hostility of course i'm thinking about the magazine that's the university of texas where no white people are allowed i'm thinking about co the courses on every single college campus in this country where they teach white privilege how white people are keeping black people down how black people are relentless victims of white racism Thinking of the, all the demonstrations against gentrification in this country, including one two nights ago in Philadelphia, where Temple University wants to build a football university, but all the black people say, no, you can't do that because that's going to have some mysterious damaging effect on our neighborhood. So let's go from one end of the spectrum to the other. Not a pretty picture. Police now identifying the officer shot and killed last night in Missouri as 30-year-old Christopher Ryan Morton. He was responding to a 911 call at a home outside Kansas City when a suspect opened fire from inside. Morton was entering the home when he was shot. Two other officers were injured. It was seven months to the day after another Clinton officer was murdered during a traffic stop. It's just another tragic event for for this community and especially this police department uh, they've endured a lot uh, they're going to endure more uh, so everyone's thoughts and prayers would be appreciated appreciated by them the suspect found shot dead after barricading himself inside for three hours budweiser a proud sponsor of the kansas city royals would like to take this time to salute our nation's soldiers and veterans tonight we salute Specialist Christopher Morton. In November of 2005, Specialist Morton joined the Army National Guard and has been deployed twice. This past May, he returned home from Afghanistan where he had served as a bridge crew member and radio communications manager and maintained all military bridges in multiple regional commands. Earlier today, Specialist Morton presented Royals pitcher Jeremy Guthrie with the United States flag that was flown overseas during his deployment. Please raise your Budweiser and join us in honoring Specialist Christopher Morton and all those who keep our nation safe and free. Investigators say Vincent Terry reported his wife missing on Christmas Day, four days after he claimed she walked out of their house. But investigators say pictures of her lifeless body on his phone tell a different story. We responded to a call for a missing person. This is Crystal Terry. Uh, she was pregnant at the time and she had left the home without any medications that she was supposed to have. What started as a missing persons report now a homicide investigation. 47 year old Vincent Terry initially told officials his wife had snorted drugs and disappeared the night of December 21st, leaving behind her purse, wallet and cell phone. She was 19 weeks pregnant, but as investigators combed through their house and electronic devices, the truth began to emerge. Mr. Terry had photos on his phone of his wife's deceased body. 
Uh, further investigation at the home turned up more evidence. On December 21st at 7.54 p.m., a string of text messages to her friend, including, will you please come pick me up, 911. I need you, it's serious, and I'll do anything. Records show Crystal made 11 outgoing phone calls in four minutes, the last one at 8.59 p.m. She wasn't heard from again. This isn't the first sign of trouble. In 2014, Vincent Terry was arrested for an attempted homicide. Crystal listed as the victim. Records indicate she showed up to a friend's place with the boot print on her face and marks around her neck, but she refused to cooperate at the time and dropped the charges. Vincent Terry is now facing a second degree murder charge. He's being held without bond. All right, thank you. 603 police were searching for a man wanted following a brutal robbery in Venice. Cell phone video shows the man attacking the victim last night at a bus stop at Main and Venice Boulevard. Police say the thief walked up to the victim, punched and hit him repeatedly, and then got away with some cash. The victim, a young man in his late teens, was taken to a local hospital. Get your bag, get your bag. Hey, security! Oh. Last night on MSNBC, people did a, were talking about how Joy Reid was talking about how any anybody with a gun who wants to defend themselves is just a creepy old white dude creepy old dude i mean this 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 hostility you don't have to be a white nationalist which i am not which i reject but you don't have to be somebody who believes in that to look at this what's going on in this country right now and see that there's something very weird here and it starts from hostility in one end, and the other end it ends up at, at black on white murder. I, I don't know if it's getting better. I don't know if it can get better without making a whole lot of black kids angry.